All right, great. So now in the back to school series, I would um, quickly give us again the background of the strategy and then we'll go to the chat and see how to utilize it. I've given you guys the concept of C liquidity before. I said, if you have A, B, this is A, B, and C, or let me do it like this, something like that, that you expect price to come take here. Sorry, let me, let me make this thing the right way. We have something like this. I said, you expect price to come take this level to go up, right? This is liquidity. Assuming this is point C, this is the liquidity to want to take before going up. Why? The first thing is that you have what to call a value line. We have what to call a value line. Our value line helps us identify our bigger time frame bias. So it delineates the bigger time frame bias. But bigger time frame bias is bullish. We will be looking for bullishness, but we we'll only look for bullishness when price comes to what we call the POI. That is our point of interest. Our point of interest is this click, right? C liquidity, we'll call it click. And that click to make it easy for us, we will use a fractal line. We use a fractal line. Again, to help us quickly understand what a fractal is, um, I've done this before, I'm gonna do it again. So let's say this is um, your palm, right? The right palm to be precise. This will be finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four, and finger five. For most people that I've seen, finger three is always the longest, right? So this finger three is our fractal. The fractal only forms when you have the two candles to the left, one, two, lower than candle three, and then the two candles to the right, four, five, also lower than candle three. So this fractal will not show until candle five has closed and candle six started. Candle six can come up, candle six can go down, we don't care. So this will have a fractal. If our value line is bearish, we will be looking for price to make a U-turn, come clip. I'm gonna use a term here, we'll call it tick. That tick means it just taps it and make a U-turn or goes above it, whichever one. Once it breaches this click, this fractal line, this C liquidity, we, we say it has taken it, right? So once it takes the stop loss or stop orders there, we will begin to anticipate that it should sell, right? But we don't know, there may be another, it might, it might continue to go up. So we'll not just sell by sell limits, we will sell by instant execution. And in that case, we'll wait for candlestick patterns, right? We'll wait for the last bullish candle to be engulfed to the downside. And then we will either sell from this point or just sell instantly and take a walk, right? Another thing I want us to have at the back of our mind is that you could have one fractal or um, fractal line there, and you have another fractal line here, and you have another fractal line here. This will call a click, and these two will call a paycheck, right? So it's, that is more money for us, more money for us, right? For those of you who have passed through the binary class, you saw the way DAPO was trading with the DCA, if we use this, right? You DC around here, DC around here, DC around here. Anyhow, it's gonna fall off from one of these points. Even if the fall off is just gonna be temporary, you will make your money um, and then take, take a walk. Again, scalping is not for every type of um, temperament, right? You've got to be precise. You've got to be, um, you, you've got to be somebody who doesn't find it difficult to take decisions quickly. It's going against you, cut it. You've made some profit, take it, or break even, or partial, whatever you want to do. You must be willing to, um, don't trade scalping strategies like you're trading intraday or swing strategies. So if I want to sell, and my value line again is bearish. Once price begins its dance towards 
this line, I'm anticipating price to make a U-turn from here or from here or from here. I never get to know um, which of them is going to be, except I want to go and start adding some you know, oscillators and that's going to compound the whole issue, right? So I'm going to wait for price action to tell me when to get in. When I'm getting in, my stop loss is going to be five or 10 pips, depending on what I see on the chart above my um, click, right? Above my click, above that fractal line. And my TP is traditionally going to be the next fractal line below. If it's too close, I jump the trade, right? If um, And how, how, what do I mean by if it's too close? For instance, if this is 10 pips, I shouldn't be aiming for a five pip take profit. Right? I should be aiming for at minimum another 10 pip take profit or even more, right? If it's too close, take a walk. If the candle that break that broke to the downside to give you a bearish engulfing has already halved your TP, let it go. Wait for another one, right? The, 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 the aim here is you're looking for something that has a high risk to reward ratio, right? So if your risk is five pips, you should be aiming for anything greater than five pips for your TP and nothing less. So let's go to the chart and um, see how we can do this. So here is um, here is this. I'm going to be using. Uh, how did I get to this pair? All right. Well, let's just use it. Um, Again, I'm going to explain something here. We have certain indicators here for your use. Aside the ones you already know, you, you already know, you already know the um, daily high low. You already know the Asia range. Um, they are not needed in this strategy. You also know the multi time frame fractal. I've given some of us before, and I've told you how to get it on um, the market. I'll show you how to get it again. Then we have our value line. Now, depending on whether you want to be a high frequency FX trader, that is high frequency trader, or you want to be just a mild, mildly fast, right? You could go into your fractal and determine what time frame. For this, for instance, it picks the time frame where you are. For instance, I'm on five minutes time frame. If I have zero here, it's going to show me five minutes time frame fractals. Again, just to help you understand. If I if I want to change this to if I want to be less, um, less aggressive, then I can change this to 15. I'm on five minutes, I want to trade on five minutes, but I want to use 15 minutes fractal. You see, I have less fractals on my chart. I have less fractals on my chart, ladies and gentlemen. But if I want to be more aggressive, right, I'll go for um, that same time frame, right? So again, I'll go to my indicators and I check on my fractals and I can make this zero. And I'll have more lines on my chart right now. You can see that. So you determine what you want to do. Um, depend on my mood and what I intend to achieve in the account. I practically play with same time frame on five minutes, or sometimes I go for fifteen minutes, just so that I don't get too many setups. Uh, but if I'm if I'm if I'm if it's a good day and I'm going to be on the chart, and I'm, I'll use five minutes because I get more setups. But it simply means I'll get out on time and then. I'm done for the day. So that is that. So this line, let me just explain fractal again for some people seeing it for the very first time. There's an indicator here. For those of you that are going to be using your mobile device, just come to the indicator settings, go to Bill Williams and call up fractals. If I call up fractals on my chart. Look at this point. See this line, this horizontal line. See where it started from. It started at the same point where this fractal appeared. Notice that the two candles to the right of it are the, their lows are not as low as this one. And the lows of the two candles to the right are also not as low. So two candles to the left, not as low. Two candles to the right, not as low. This point become a fractal. Look at this. Two candles to the right, not as high. Two candles to the left, or two candles to the left are not as high. Two candles to the right, not as high. That's a fractal point. So all these lines actually align with this fractal here's a fractal forming right it's that in fact it has formed right these two candles to the left not as high as the high of this 
and these two candles to the right, not as high as high, that, that line just formed pop, and it's never going to live there again. It will never repaint, never repaint. If you want a strategy that you could use to go far in trading, you should use a strategy that doesn't change its mind as the market changes their mind. That is, it's not, it doesn't repaint, it doesn't appear, and then when you come back the next time, it has disappeared. Uh, you won't trust something like that. So that's, that is our fractal. That's where we anticipate a click. And this is our value line, right? Here we are on five minutes. Um, let me quickly go change something here just so we could see things more clearly. It's, it's going to make, um, it's going to make the color, it's going to make the chart a little bit too colorful, but we might just need it. I'm going to make the bullish ones white. make the bullish ones white and I'll make the bearish ones pink just so we can see it clearly. You could choose any color of your, of your choice. All right, so you can see that pink line. That pink line tells us we're selling. If I'm selling, what do I do? Right, if I'm selling, what do I do? So for instance, let's start from the beginning here, I'm selling. So what do I do? Here's the fractal point. Here's the fractal point like that. Look at how price came to this fractal point, tapped on it, poop, right? And, and candle closed below this highest candle. That is my sell trade from here. I would have entered my sell trade, right? And price played, it never got to my TP. The next TP will be this lower fractal here that I can see. Price played around, went back, went back, hit my stop loss. I lost that trade. The next one, this is a fractal up here. Price never got to the fractal. This formed a new fractal. Let me magnify it so you guys can see clearly. Yep, you see this line here, price never got to it. Rather, I went to form another one beneath it. I'm waiting for price to come take these fractals. Price played around, poop, poop, took out all of them, and then closed below here. Once it closed below, I enter. I make back all the money I've lost. I make back all the money I've lost, ladies and gentlemen. Here's another setup. This is a fractal here. Price closed beneath it here. You are scalping, you are going in fast. You are not here for 100 pips, 20 pips, right? Price came in, my stop loss will be above. Immediately, immediately close, I entered. Price played with my emotions and then dropped. Those are my TPs down there. Right. Again, you have to check if your TP, if your stop loss is 10 pips and your TPs are 10 pips, you don't take the trade. You don't take the trade. Your TPs are the fractals below. Right. And then we went bullish. So here we are in the bullish one and price is moving. Right. So, and this is because I used zero. Right. Let me change this to 15. You have less setups. Right. So here we have what the 15. You notice the other ones that gave me like stop loss here is no longer there. The stop loss one here is no longer there. It just took me straight to the precise one. Boop, gave my entry. Zoom to the downside. Again, winning trade. Winning trade. Here we have the bullish one, no setup yet. All right, let's go to AJ. Here's AJ. And in AJ, I'm also using, hey, where are you? All right, so see AJ today. We are bullish from this day, right? We are bullish from this day. Based on the 15 minutes, no setup, right? Those are the fractal points. It never really came back to tap our fractal low for us to buy. We have those days. Here is a sell. See how price came? This pink is a sell price came, tap all those points, one, two, three. At this point, I'm waiting for a sell signal. I got the sell signal here when price closed below the highest bullish can do. And I enter my sell. It played around with me, right? It played around almost all day. By then, um, you don't turn a scalping strategy into, you don't turn a scalping strategy into a swing strategy. If you enter the trade and six, eight candles after you enter, it is still dancing, get out. Is a scalping strategy. You are not planning to hold it for long. If you enter a trade 
right? Six candles, eight candles after you enter, it hasn't moved in your direction. Take a walk. You're scalping, you're not doing it a drill. You take a walk, guys. <clears throat> now, again, I'm going to do the same thing I did the last time. This was for 15. What if I come here and change it back to five? You get more setups and you get more losses, but you also get more wins. Right. So here we are. <clears throat> Took out this fractal, it closed beneath it here. That's my entry. One, two, you've made some profits. Right. One to that movement from here to here is 11 pips. If you make 11 pips in a scalping strategy and it still goes back to your stop loss, you need to improve on your skill. But never allow a winning trade become a losing trade. Break even or something. 10 pips, break even. If it comes back, take you out. No problem. You, I can have break even like 10 times. I'm just waiting for one that will move in my direction. Something like this. That once I enter, it just moves in my direction. That will cover for all the 10 trades. It will cover for all the waiting I had to do for 10 trades. Right? Again, let's go to the value line. The value line, the imputes are 60 and 40. You can even turn it to 80 and 40. It doesn't really matter. The concept here is that when I am bullish, short term, I only want to be buying from the lows. And I don't want to buy from any low. I want to buy from a low that is actually low, that has come back to take this low. That is one I want to buy from. Right? That's what I want to buy from. I'm buying from extreme low points. That is what I want to buy um, from. Now, look at this. This is a buy, for instance. We would have bought from here. And then it went in our direction. And it came down to it as stop loss. Sorry for, lo for, for the loss. You accept the loss. Never leave it and say, I'm going to go down. I want to wait and see. Right? So I typically do this in tandem with other strategies. If you look at this properly, you discover that the um, global trend was bullish. Right? So meaning that on this particular day, on the M30, I would have typically be waiting for an entry around here, basically, right? Whereas when I'm scalping, I would have had one or few, one, one or two losses before it, it um, pushes um, to the upside. So let's put, let's put our thoughts together. I'm going to leave it to you to determine the length of your, um, the length of your value line. That is the settings of your value line. You determine the settings of your value line. I've shown you guys that you can use 64 or 63, right? You also need to look for the time frame of your expected clicks. Again, I've shown you guys you could do it on five minutes and you could use it on 15 minutes. And by expected clicks, I mean the fractals, right? I'm also going to leave you guys to determine your time frame of entry. You could do this on M5 if you're scalping, and you could also do this on M15. Right? I'll give you guys an example of what I mean. So here is my global trend, right? On the H M30. That's my global trend. I could come here and come to my fractals. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's delete fractals. I'll come to my MTF fractal and say, look, guy, I want to see only 15 minutes um, clicks. But I'll take my trade off 30 minutes. I could do that. Or I could take my trade off 15 minutes, right? I could come to 15 minutes. And I'm trading off 15 minutes clicks. Let's see how it would have played out, right? So this was a buy. You'd have entered this buy here and lost. And then you would have had a sell here. Of course, you won't take a sell. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. If I'm trading off a 30 minutes like this, my value line here is bullish. And I'm going to a lower time frame to trade in line with this value line, right? My higher time frame, let's say my higher time frame that I want to use is 30 minutes. I will go to a lower time frame, like five minutes or 15 minutes, 
and trade clicks in direction of 30 minutes. I'm scalping. I want to get out fast, right? I could even use my higher time frame as H1. So if my H1 is bullish, I'm only looking to buy, right? But if I'm looking to buy, I will come to M15 and M5 or whatever to buy in, in line with my M30 or M H1. So the only time I'll start selling is when this thing here changes bearish. That is the safest method. But if you want to be, if you want to trade both ways, yes, you could, but just prepare that you have more losses. But again, you still make money. And I'll give an example. If I go to five minutes, now I'm going to, I'm trading both ways here on five minutes. What happened? Yeah, let's, let's wait. It seems five minutes is too heavy for this thing. Yeah, if I'm trading five minutes and I want to trade both ways, right? Remember, I'm going to have more losses, but I'll also have winners. Um, all these are buy trades that would have won it. Let's quickly run through the buy so that you see. This is one click to the downside. That is a buy. This one click to the downside. That is a buy. This one click to the downside, that was a buy. This might have hit stop loss. This one click to the downside, and that is a buy. This is another click to the downside. This is the lowest we can do. That's another buy. This one click to the downside, that is a buy that would have hit stop loss. Another buy that would have hit stop loss, and then we we'll stop buying. Now we are looking for sales. This is a click to the downside. It just played around. It can do rules, you get out and then it, it changed back to a buy. So it's usually good to trade in line with the trend. But the reason why I don't kick against people who do um, both sides is that when the market is ranging, you can actually make money from both sides. Let's go to a pair like GU. Here we have GU. See an example of what I'm trying to say. So look at GU. GU has been telling you to buy. Right, so here we have a fractal take to the downside. Price took it down. Poop, you enter a buy, it played with you. You break even. If you don't break even, sorry to come back for your stop loss. No problem. If you came back for your stop loss, no problem. It allies. This is the next one. And then you enter the trade. You make back all your money. Right? You make back all of your money. Um, these are buys. This is a click to the upside. This would have hit your stop loss. There is no, no gain saying to that. Then you have another one, but then this has turned bearish. So you stop taking that. These are all sales. Click to the upside, sell. Click to the upside, sell, right? So if you, are, if you meet a pair that is ranging, you can actually sit down on 15 minutes or five minutes and just trade it both ways. You eventually make money. However, the safest, is that you trade it in line with a higher time frame. The higher time frame can be 30 minutes or one hour. So if you are using 30 minutes, you go to five minutes. If you're using one hour, you go to 15 minutes or something like that. Um, yeah, you could go to 15 minutes or even five minutes itself, it's still good. One hour, five minutes or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 15, um, five minutes, right? Higher time frame. So you have to have at the back of your mind, what is this thing telling me on my higher time frame? If it's telling you on your higher time frame to buy, you are scalping. Scalping is fast pace. Look at this, for example, now. Let's call up that stuff again. If I'm trading off, if my 30 minutes is telling me that I'm bullish, I'll only be looking for buys in my lower time frame until this 30 minutes tells me sell. Then I'm going to look for sell, right? Again, um, if you are an experienced trader, you can actually sit on these 30 minutes and take your trades. Why? What are your, what are the, what are your um, fractal? Your fractal is on 15 minutes. It simply means even though I'm on 30 minutes, these lines I'm seeing here are on 15 minutes. These lines I'm seeing here are 15 minutes lines, but I'm in 30 minutes. So I can take the trade from here if you're an experienced trader. It's just that your stop loss is going to be wider. So I'd rather do this for intraday types of trading. If I'm scalping, I want my stop loss to be as small as possible. 
If my stop loss is 10 pips, it means I'm getting out at 10 pips. Yes, I just remembered something before I continue talking. You can't use this strategy on every broker. You lose perpetually, right? And I'll show you why. Um, this Intelligence Prime Live server, let's go to a different server. Let's see who goes away server. You must have a, uh, a broker whose spread is very, very small, right? If not, if you place your stop loss down here, they will pick it. Price doesn't need to get there. You only need either your bid or your ax, depending on whether you're buying or selling. So I typically suggest, yeah, who goes away is low, but uh, I suggest IC markets, then I suggest Vantage. IC market, Vantage, FX, if you want to scalp, right? Because if you're scalping, if your stop loss is five pips, you just want to put maybe another two pips, right? And if you're scalping, you want to look at USD pairs, basically. Yeah, you could look at JPY pairs too, but USD pairs basically because they are spread is small. I'm, I'm, I'm going to call up this tab here. If I come here, this is your bid and your ax. If this is your MT4, right click, go to spread and click on it. You would see that the spread for Euro USD is just six pipettes, which is less than one pip. The spread for ADSD is 11 pipettes, which is just like one pip, right? But look at Euro AUD, two pips. Look at UBBCF, two pips. GJ, two pips. And we are at the peak period right now. We are at peak period right now. That's why it is like this. If we go down to some of the um, low period, GJ can be as high as four pips, right? So you need to have that at the back of your mind. Now, even though I say we don't need the Asia range for this strategy, if you can't open with IC markets, and you can't open with Vantage, and let's say you have one of these brokers in Nigeria or something whose spread can be, can be suicidal. Never trade this strategy outside the kill zones. Trade them at, from London till when London closes. Once London closes or two hours before New York close, stop trading this strategy. The spread will take your, you'll get the direction right, but the spread will take your money. Right. It's a scalping strategy, it's high precision. You want to only trade it when the trend, when the spread is small, right? So this is, this is, um, let's do something here. Sorry. Let's do something here so you see what I'm saying. This is, this is, um, let's take it again. Let's get the name. This is who goes with. Right, I'm going to open another broker account for you now. Just wait and see. Um, let's come to this. Open an account. Have I see markets here? Let's look for FXTM. Let's look for FXTM. Call it up. Very good. So I'm going to pick on FXCM ECN demo, right? I'll click on next new demo account. Next, blah blah blah. Agree. Next, finish. So I just opened an FXCM demo account right now. I'm going to come here again. This GBP USD is practically zero. USDT, real USD is practically zero. Um, ADUSD is practically less than one people, right? So you look for brokers that will give you very low spread at certain times of the day. 
because as a scalper, you most likely get out at six pips, seven pips, two pips, three pips, 10 pips. You don't, you're not holding it for long. You want a broker that is not going to take part of your money just because you are scalping, right? You look for good ones. If we wait for FXTM now, wait till um, evening, these things we are seeing here can be as much as 40 something pips. You'll be dashing them your money, right? So let's wrap this up now. So again, I'll suggest pick 30 minutes, one hour as your time frame of reference. Pick 15 minutes, five minutes as your entry um, conditions. And so that you will reduce your risk of losses, wait until you're in the London session, or at least midway into New York session, London session to midway into New York session, before you take your trade. Would you have losing trades? Yes. Would you have winning trades? Yes, but your winning trades will be more because you are buying low. You are waiting for price to come take out the fractals before you buy. I'm going to give room for one or two questions right now. As quite so this, this is a the scalp strategy. Um, I typically don't do this on GBP pairs. They could be very, very erratic. I look for um more senior pairs like NZD, USD, AUD, USD, even Euro USD to do this on, right? You look for senior pairs to do this on. Um, so on the 30 minutes, if you are doing 30 minutes, for example, now 30 minutes has told us that we should be bullish, right? If you want to trade this on 30 minutes, see what you see what you would have done. You are bullish. Let's say you want to trade on 30 minutes. You took out this fractal. They didn't close above. You took out this fractal. It didn't close above. Right? It took out this fractal. It closed. You took it. You made some small pips. It started coming back. You, you scrap your trade. You're a scalper. Once you see TP, you don't want to come back to loss. You, you, you cut it at break even or minus one pip. You never want to see a loss once you've seen profit. That's the work of a scalper. You want to get out as fast as possible. Here again, it came back to the downside again. Although, although I said don't trade Asia, but I'm using this to explain. It came back again. These, these are fractals here. These are fractals. It took out the fractal. That is the close above. That's your entry. It went. It's coming back. Scrap the trade. It gave you another one. You went. You won that trade. Okay. Here are other ones. Winning trades to the upside. And let's look for sales. Here, uh oh, let me do this. Let's look for sales. Here we have our sales. Again, you are bearish off the 30 minutes. You decide that 15 minutes is going to be your click condition. This is one. That's the click. That's the close below. That is the sell. This is a click. This didn't close below. This is the close below you enter. That's the sell. This is another click. That's the close below. That's your stop loss. And then another sell. And then another sell. This would have hit your stop loss, unfortunately. Now we are bullish. That's the click. It didn't close above. It didn't close above. It closed above. That's your buy. That's a click. That's a close above. That's your buy. That's a click. Okay, I think I've done this. Right? So, pause.